The Midlands Today Show with Will Faulkner. Midlands 103. Coming to you live from downtown Portlaoise this morning, we're focusing on our town centres, whether it be here in Portlaoise or Edenderry or Tullamore or Mullingar or Athlone. There is a perception that they're withering or they're dying. Now, Jack Nolan, Heidi Higgins and Phil Duggan put paid to that notion a little earlier. But let's meet some people who have a unique knowledge of the main street here in Port Leash and how they see the future and how they see the challenges at the moment. Um, PJ Kavanagh was born and reared in downtown Port Leash and the family pub is now in its fourth generation. Matthew Keegan, born and raised here and went on to become mayor of the town. And we also have Declan O'Loughlin from O'Loughlin's Hotel who just returned from France cut short his holiday, especially to be here today. Cain Faw. Uh, well, maybe it was a bit warm over there, but uh, Jack was sending a few text messages over to see how, telling me how things were going, and uh, we were told that the US ambassador would be here, and there was no actual representative from the hotel here, as I were, my son is uh, away on holidays, so I said I'd make a, a dash back here and uh, be here today. Not many men would do that. The ambassador should be very grateful whenever he arrives. That's for sure. <laughs> well, I wasn't too popular with my wife. And I also, uh, Michael O'Leary was very kind to charge me 260 euros, st <laughs> or 260 <laughs> sterling, just for a flight over. That would have cost 45 if I'd booked it online. So That's Michael O'Leary. That's, that's why how he's to make successful. Money. Let's talk about why the people around this table have been successful and hopefully will be successful into the future. You've seen a lot of changes on the main street in your time, I imagine, Declan. What's your expectation over the next couple of months and years? Well, there has been changes, and times, you know, it's gone hand in hand with the recession and the shopping centres taking a major footfall out there. But it's like Phil said and Jack said previously that you have to go out now and work a lot harder than, say, over the last six or seven years business seemed to fall in the door. I'm sure PJ had agreed that, you know, in the good times it was uh, business people probably were lax and sat back a little and let it happen. But, and we we cannot do that. We have the luxury now of doing that. We have to go out and, and work harder at business and be proactive. And uh, let me take this opportunity to compliment Marcus Breslin and Jack Nolan and Phil Duggan and PJ and anyone else that was involved in this. It's, an, it's a massive venture and it it's takes a lot of effort mm. and takes a lot of guts because, you know, y business is with its back against the wall at the moment. And But in recognition of that, it's a local effort. What about the national picture? You're in the hospitality trade and there was the reduction in the VAT rate, for instance, mm. last week. Um, has that helped or what do you think needs to be done well, to make your like battle a little easier? And w w as we have to go across the board and cut corners in business now to stay in business. So anything that helps our margins stay, uh, you know, quite level. Um, there's great discussions at the moment at the JLC and all that. But businesses, without doubt, particularly in the, in the service end, restaurants, hotels, you see Kilkey Castle closing, you know, it's because of overheads, it's because of staff, wages, etc., etc. So basically across the board, all over Ireland, we, we in business, yeah, we're cutting our, our corners, we're cutting the cloth to suit our business. And I admire everyone that's in business at the moment, and I, I, my heart goes out to people who, who can't survive. Mm. But, you know, we're in a situation where people have to survive. You know, it's going, we're going to go forward. We're probably at the low end of the graph now with recession with everything you know uh, we all remember the 80s and they were probably worse than this uh, only that people hadn't so much money borrowed in mortgages at that at that time but you know from now on i can see that we're going to look up we might it might be a very very slow and gradual process but i do think since the new government in, went in in early this year that people have began to think positive and see light at the end of the tunnel and no, well, it's all about confidence, really. People have to feel secure in parting with their cash that they don't need it for a rainy day at some point down the line. But let's see, can we figure out maybe a bit of a formula for success? Earlier, Heidi Higgins touched on a point about women going shopping. They'll peruse and they'll browse 
and then they'll go for a coffee or they might have a meal and, and it's a package, it's a whole shopping experience. Uh, are there other measures that a town can do and, and you're in the entertainment business PJ, you might have views on this. What can town centres do to stop some of the leakage to be it external shopping centres on the periphery of the town or indeed to other towns? Absolutely, um, I'd agree with you completely there on the um, entertainment side of things anyway and trying to develop a full package for people to come in. I suppose one of the things that the Vintners and Port Leash have done very cohesively is we've all gone together and um, there's a, we've got a bit of a kitty together to support different festivals and events coming into the town. You know, This year alone, we'll probably, this weekend, I think PJ Fellow was on with you earlier, this is, will be the fourth or fifth festival taking place in the town centre this, this year. Um, earlier this year we had the Gospel Choir, which we had, and you're talking about creating value for people and for family friendly events. Um, we had the Dublin, Go Dublin Gospel Choir down performing on the main street, which attracted a great crowd. Now the, the weather might have been against us a small bit on the day, which I suppose is going to be against everyone in Ireland. You can't do anything about that. Yeah, <clears throat> but um, these events were created, in fact, especially I suppose by Leash County Council as well, it has to be set, and the people in the town to bring that footfall back onto the main street and into the different businesses. And these events take place throughout the afternoon from early morning to late at night, and it does create business and it brings people back into the town, creates a good atmosphere on the main street. And even if people are coming in with their families during the afternoon, as you were saying, people are going to come in and buy a cup of coffee or have a sandwich or have a meal in town. But there must be something else to the success because your company's in its fourth generation now. There are family pubs right across the Midlands that unfortunately have failed. Mm. So what are you doing differently? Well, I suppose the pub industry is, a, for me, it's you know it's a labour of love as well, and a lot of families down through the down through their generations, you know maybe the same interest wasn't there with some of the family, and you know times are tougher as well. It's not you know it's not the trade that it was years ago, and you have to work harder at it. And people probably come into it, and the perception is probably out there that all publicans are millionaires and this, that, and the other, but far, far from it, I'll tell you. It's you know it's a 70, 80, 90 hour week, and you have to go in and get stuck into it. And if the families themselves, I suppose. Some people, you know, there was other easier ways to make money over the past few generations with the Celtic Tiger and other avenues were opened for people to explore. Um, some publicans and some families probably, uh, there was an onus probably <laughs> responsibility on them to continue the family mm -hmm. trade. And uh, for me, I was delighted to do that and be, you know, I was uh, delighted to keep it going as long as I can anyway. But hard work while it's necessary, it's not everything. And we were talking about the, the day trade how shops might be quieter, or there might be less footfall. At night time, people's habits have changed completely. They're not just coming into the pub, having a few drinks, moving on to nightclubs. They're now starting at home. And sometimes they bypass the pub altogether and go to the nightclub. So Absolutely. How do you convert them? Absolutely. I suppose it's, it's about innovation and change as well. You know, it's, it's an old saying where people, you know, look, you can turn the key in the door and the business will flow in. That's gone. You have to change and adapt. You have to provide a different value, uh, value perception for people. You have to give them entertainment options that they like that they might not, that they will not be able to get at home. Um, you know, we provide various different forms of events in the pub um, to dr bring people in, such as comedy clubs and live music and different events. Um, we've twinned with pubs over Skype, say, um, with different pubs around the country in that as well. But it just keeps the cu customer constantly interested, and they're you know they're they're thinking about what's going to happen next, mm. and it's up for it's up to publicans to, to be inventive and be creative and come up with those different concepts. Absolutely, they're not all going to work out without any shadow of a doubt. No, but yeah. I suppose you have an advantage in being in a town setting. Absolutely. If you were in a rural pub, an isolated area, yeah, you couldn't really do that. It wouldn't work. No, it wouldn't. Um, but then, you know, you can even def uh, decipher the pubs in towns as well, the variety of pubs that are out there. And I suppose it's talking about your target audience and your target market. Are you going to, are you going to connect with, the, with your demographic, whether it's 18 to 30-year-olds or 25 to 50-year-olds? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the pub in the crossroads in the countryside probably is all things to all men and women, as well, I should say. Indeed. <laughs> um, and that's probably where... Uh, that's probably w absolutely where I agree, where the pubs, you know, the Crossroad pub is suffering a lot because the population just isn't there and the money isn't there behind them as well. Matthew Keegan, can you give us a different perspective? Maybe leave the business to one side for a moment and talk about what it's like to live on the main street. Well, I suppose over the years, one of the biggest changes that have been on the main street was that uh, when I was young, um, the, the, the whole uh, main street was completely community and family orientated. And nowadays, a lot of the, the business people have moved to the peripheries of town 
and just to come in uh, to have lock up units, I suppose, or, or similar in the main street. Um, when I was born and reared uh, in the Market Square, uh, when we were young, there was about 30 kids in that little small square. You go down, mm. you, you know, the Browns, the Prendergast, the Phelans, the Mars. There was all these these guys who all became great into, into county footballers, the hurlers after yes. as well. You know, there, there was a you, you remember all the names? How many are still there? Uh, there's very, very few there now. There's th I think the Maris and the Fieldlands are the only s young families that are still there. But the, 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 all these guys still mostly live around town. And it's amazing, uh, f f friends that you have when you're young, they become lifelong friends as well. But you go down along the town then, you had the, the Bournes, had Peter Bourne, who's a, a, I suppose a world-famous poet now. Uh, you had different families, the Bennets. You had the, you had the, these, I suppose the biggest difference is now that, um, that you don't have young families living in the middle of the town. Mm. And while the heart might still have a town, uh, while the town still might have a heart, probably the soul possibly has drifted out of it, you know. But that's, that's just purely on a non-commercial uh, aspect to it. You yes, know? so there will be more a commercial focus on the main street than a residential one compared to when you were growing up. Uh, oh, it is, yeah. And I suppose what some people forget is that, that uh, uh, when you have family-orientated businesses, when the business goes down, it doesn't just, it doesn't just affect that business. It affects the whole family br uh, spectrum. Um, during Christmas week or, or any week if you go downtown, uh, if you go into any shop, you'll see the sons, the, the, the daughters, the grandchildren, the brothers and sisters all working, trying to help out in the family business. And I think it's an, an aspect that we, we probably have undervalued over the years. And I think it is worth focusing on, possibly when shoppers go out, uh, they should probably have at the back of their mind uh, the value of shopping mm -hmm. in family-oriented businesses. Well, that's what I found very tragic about Jim's country kitchen. Jim had his family involved and immersed in the business, and then when it folded, all of them had a void. It wasn't just Jim. That would be bad enough, but the entire family had this gap to fill in their lives. Th 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 that's How right. How do you find a way of doing that? Yeah, well, it's really, really quite difficult, and um, I suppose it's an, uh, it was interesting to hear Peter saying there a minute ago about, about his, his uh, fourth generation, probably things like that, and I would have come off much the same bat. I suppose like we're into a third generation of business now in Port Leach, you know, and sometimes, um, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the, f the business is more than just the business. Like actually, when we were young and we were when, when we were working in the shop, I suppose I started working from the time I was about 11, I suppose, the same as, and I don't think, we, we, we weren't entitled to our statutory employment rights at that mm. stage, I don't think, I wouldn't have liked to have been the one to, to, to rise them either. Uh, but uh, uh, you, don't, uh, you almost don't consider it work, you consider it just part of your life, and uh, you, um, I can assure you wages wouldn't be a feature of the show or anything like that, you know. But, uh, uh, and I suppose for the benefit of people further afield who don't know your line of work, you, you have a family pub? Yeah, well, and uh, undertaking business as well? That's right, yeah, yeah. And likewise, both of these would have inherited from my previous generations, mm. you know, so I just really just continue on the family tradition. And uh, I don't mean to be glib, but does the undertaking business ever go through recession? Uh, it's, it's refreshing. It's, it, I suppose the undertaking business is, re is recession proof, I suppose, you know. Um, but I suppose <laughs> you don't, you, you, it's not a business where you, tr you don't really try and highlight the positive part of, of the undertaking business because there aren't really that many, mm. you know. Uh, it is, you are dealing with people when they're, when they're possibly at emotionally at a lower ebb and uh, as well as you, you don't take, uh, it's work that you do, but it's not work that you really take pleasure out of. Mm. But uh, anyway, when you enlist him a soldier, so that's, that's what I do. On a final point, you mentioned the soul has kind of gone from the main street, that yes, it's still the heart of activity, but is there any way of restoring that community sense, that soul that you described? Right. Well, a, a very important point to make about that is that uh, b businesses uh, rising and falling is cyclical. And I, I'm young enough to remember when, when um, there was actually fairs held on the main street in Port Leach. And just prickly up along the main street here, I, I, I distinctly remember the, the pig fairs. So the, the main street does change. It goes up and goes down over the years. And at the moment, it, it may well be kind of at a lull. And unfortunately, a lot of the publicity that got for the past month or so was, was if not if not negative, but certainly not positive. But, but that's just cyclical. That's the normal run of things. And the main street, there, there are a massive amount of businesses still on the main street and are still employing a lot of people and are ready to go again and are going again. So like, it is not all negative. And uh, I was delighted to see the initiative by the traders there lately because they're sending out a strong, strong signal that we are still here, we're still going, it's still a positive place to do business, and please come and see us. Matthew Keegan, PJ Cameron, thank you both very much for joining us this morning.